What's up everyone? Good morning and welcome back to Better Biomed. Today I've got something very special for you because I have to answer questions about power cords pretty much every single day. And uh, it is kind of a complex topic and that's because there are so many different variants and there's so many different manufacturers and they all have their own styles, their own requirements. I have to answer this question so much so often I figured let's just do a comprehensive video where we try and cover as much on this topic as possible. This is not going to be an easy video to do, guys. And fortunately, Phoebe, uh, where I work here, uh, they they sell a lot of power cords. A lot. A lot, a lot, a lot. So, um, since we sell so many power cords, I have an ample supply of examples. And I'm going to do my absolute best to do a complete review guide for you guys on power cords. So let's go ahead and do it. Okay guys, I think I have enough examples here where we are going to be able to do a video about all the different properties of power cords. So one of the first things that you should immediately notice on all power cords is that they are going to have different thicknesses. And they're going to have different thicknesses because the conductors inside the cable are going to have different diameters and those diameters are called the gauge. All right. And the gauge and the other properties of the cable are often indicated. Sometimes it's just press stamped into the insulation. Like right here, you can probably barely make it out. But here, you can see on this power cord, it is quite easily written out. So we have the quantity of conductors, we have the gauge of the conductors, and we have the temperature ratings of the cord. And look at this. Some of them have other features, like this one says antibacterial. Pretty cool. Now we have to separate the cords into yet two more groups. One of them is going to be medical grade and non-medical grade. Medical grade are going to be large, bulky, and very quality cords. Non-medical grade can go from this really puny cord. It says 10 amps, 125 volts. And notice that there is no ground conductor on some of these, whereas medical grade always have ground conductors. These ones here uh, are normally polarized, which means one blade is larger than the other. But notice how these ones here are universally polar. Unipolar, unipolar, Blah, can't talk this morning. So here is yet another interesting difference. It is entirely possible to have these cords in a medical facility and not even know it. And they will often connect up to your medical device. Sometimes they have the third hole for your ground conductor existent on the IEC, yet it's only a, a two conductor. You can tell because it's a two prong. Now these are not authorized in medical facilities. If you do have them, they're going to be on something puny. I highly suggest if you see these on any device whatsoever to get rid of them because they're going to migrate to something else and it's probably going to end up on a medical device and without the ground conductor you have no extra level of protection for faults. Now this one here, let's see, what gauge is this? It's going to be absolutely tiny. It says 18 gauge. I really don't believe that. This, this is so small, I believe it's probably a 20 gauge internal conductor. Whereas this cable right here, it says, oh wow, it's barely written in. This also says it's 18 gauge. Now, if you take a look at those, there is a vast difference in the diameter. So odd that they would both say that they're 18 gauge. Do not necessarily believe in the stampings. A lot of the cords that come from China are probably not going to be completely truthful on their internal components. Regardless, two prong cables, they need to shove off. Now we find all sorts of two prong cables out in the field and unfortunately um, that's just something that's going to migrate in when you have consumer grade devices that are intermixed with medical devices. Now when you're ordering power cords, you're going to be ordering medical grade power cords and that is going to be the cords that have a little green dot. See, I got one here. This one here is a very interesting cord made by Triplite. It's 
got a smaller head, but it's still compliant with medical grade, which means the outside of the insulator is gonna be a certain distance from the metal prongs, and they're not gonna be folded over metal prongs. They're gonna be solid. You see, solid on both of those. And if you're using power strips, the round cord right here is gonna take way more space than the triplet cord. So that's an interesting difference. Now, one of the other things that I've noticed, and I, I talked about this with somebody just last week, is on some power cords, especially back in the 1990s and early 2000s, the IEC end, this is the NEMA end, this is the IEC end. Your IEC end on some cords was unsupported. It, it had a soft structure and you could physically squeeze it just by squeezing the outsides. Now all of these are rigid in construction and they have um, a plastic that's molded into the IEC so you cannot squish that bad boy down. It's extremely difficult. Now the plug end is going to have an included strain relief. So it's gonna be molded in. There's gonna be some sort of strain relief. And the conductors have to be a specific or minimum size. The longer the power cord, the larger the internal conductors are gonna to have to be because of parasitic losses and because of the need to handle current. This is a 16 gauge cable, and I believe this one here is gonna be 18 gauge. Let's see. Yeah, so. Here we have a 16 gauge cable, and right here we have an 18 gauge cable. Now I do believe these two. Some of the other brands out there I do not believe, and this one here is a 14 gauge. Now if I'm, if I'm shooting with a 10 foot or longer cable, or it's definitely gonna be a cable that's gonna handle a higher current device, I'm gonna go with the 14 gauge every single time. 18 gauge, you can find them out there that are super long cables. Do not use those for high current devices. Not recommended whatsoever. This is a 14 gauge cable. So you have a black, you have a white and a green conductor. However, sometimes you have European wire code and you'll have a brown, a blue, and a green slash yellow conductor. And on those ones, black is hot, brown is hot. White is neutral, blue is neutral. Green and green are both ground. So there's different wiring codes that are gonna be inside the cables based on the origin of the cable. Remember that folks, inside your cable, three conductors. Those conductors could be European wire code or they could be uh, standard uh, American Western hemisphere wiring code. And that's gonna be black, white, and green. You should always remember, black and brown are gonna be your hot conductors. Always remember that. So the other thing that you should be noticing is the different IECs. So we have these two, you have this one here, and I have this one here. Oh, perfect examples. So I have a 90 degree side IEC. I have a 90 degree bottom feeding IEC. These are perfect if you have devices that are constantly being put up near a wall. Fantastic. If you have equipment carts and your IEC is mounted horizontally instead of, you know, vertically, this is the type of cord that I would highly recommend on those devices because when equipment is on equipment carts, it's pushed usually up to the back. And if you have a straight IEC, you're bending it at an extreme angle. And that is a no-go. Hard bands on power cords are always gonna be a no-go. They have specially made cords that already do that for you. Highly recommend those cables. The side loading ones are perfect if you have a power strip or something on the side and or a channel where all your cables run down. This is a fantastic cable for those. Now there's something else that you should be aware of and that is gonna be locking IEC cables. They actually have a lock. You can see it right here. If you push the male IEC into the female IEC, then it will lock in and you cannot remove it. You have to grab these two tangs, pull them down, and now you can remove the cable 
from the IEC input power module. Fantastic cable if you have cables that are walking or you have cables that maybe you really don't want them to fall out, let's say during a surgical procedure, locking IECs are fantastic. Traditional IEC has the ability, especially if it's loose fitting, which some of them are, that over time they wiggle loose. And when they wiggle loose, it can and will create pitting and disconnects on your IEC and you'll lose power. That does happen. Now, cables also come in different colors. You can see this is a locking IEC on a black cable. And we have a locking IEC on a gray cable. Normally, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter to me. It normally doesn't matter to the customers. But to some people, it matters what color the cable is. So, when ordering a cable, you're going to order based on the length, based on the size of the conductor. So, if it's 14 gauge, 16 gauge, 18 gauge, normally I'd say 14 and 16, okay? Based on the length, based on the angle of the IEC, that's going to be one of the factors. And also length of the cable so you're gonna have 15 foot you're gonna have 20 foot I think 20 is about the longest you're gonna find you're gonna find 8 foot 10 foot 12 foot the length of the cable is going to be a major factor now I have a whole bunch of cables that have been confiscated from within medical facilities on inspections often they're gonna be these traditional consumer grade cables these are not authorized in medical facilities, and that's why we have them. I have some cables that are European wiring code, and uh, they're perfect for giving examples. The other thing, as long as we're talking about power cords, you should know, Bobi also sells a lot of trip light power strips, and we find these consumer grade power strips in medical facilities all the time. These are not compliant whatsoever with electrical code, a medical grade power strip is going to be compliant and there's several different ones out there so this is the 6601 compliant there's going to be three or four different electrical codes out there that govern power strips so i did a whole video on that maybe even two or three videos on power strips because it's an ever-changing electrical code and we try and stay on top of it this is just one of those examples of 6601 this is a, a four power tap it's got the medical grade cord all the way around it's generally a heavier duty got correct strain relief and the correct breakers again the breakers are going to differ based on the uh, electrical code that you're trying to abide by and there you have it so folks power cords are not the easiest topic in the world i it is something that i could go into more detail on but it's something that you should be aware of when ordering the cord. They're not all just vanilla, all right? There's different wiring gauges, there's different lengths. The IEC, if you have an IEC on your cable, is going to come off at different angles. The angle is gonna be something that you're gonna to wanna to order specially. Not every cable is 180 degree IEC. Sometimes they're 90 degree. Sometimes they're 90 degree bent down to the right and to the left, depending on your piece of equipment. Also, the color of the cable. While it doesn't matter to you, sometimes the color of the cable does matter to the customer. So if the customer has gray cables on all their devices and all of a sudden you replace it with a black cable, there's a chance, and I have seen this several times in my career, there's a chance that they are going to have a problem. If you're gonna use power taps in a medical facility, I have multiple videos on that. Try and affix them to another piece of equipment or a service cart of some sort. If they're on a cart, it's got to be hard affixed with a tool. And they come in different electrical codes. This is a 6601. There's several others. I have a whole video on that. I'll include a link to that in the video description down below. If you need power cables and you want to go ahead and write me, write me at abetterbiomed at gmail.com and tell me what type of power cable you're looking for and I can help you out. Not an issue there. I answer questions on power cords every single day. All right, thanks for watching, guys.